I'm Ronnie Eldridge. Welcome to Eldridge and Company. Now that a woman is being nominated for president, I wonder how much difference her sex will make to a voter. And then if she's elected, will the fact that she's a woman make a difference in how she governs? I imagine my longtime friend Liz Abzug has an opinion about this. She's an attorney, professor, founder, and executive director of the Bella Abzug Leadership Institute. She is my guest today. I guess being the head of the Bella Abzug Leadership Institute means that you are her daughter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, right. I am indeed. <laughs> you know, Bella said that the 21st century was going to be a century for women, right? Yes, she did. They're going to run the world. Yes, she did. And that the future belongs to young people. That's right. So is that the basis of Bally? Yes, the basis of Bally is to train young women and girls, middle school, high school, and college girls in leadership and debate. I created it 10 years ago as a living, to make it a living legacy to Bella's work and to my own work with feminist, feminism and activism and young women. And we're now 10 years old and we train kids throughout the five boroughs in the tri-state area and young women who are coming in from all over the country. And I'm really proud. And it's, it's very dedicated to low-income uh, disadvantaged girls and many of whom are first-generation immigrants and single, the daughters of single-headed households, and yet they are the most ambitious and the most uh, in, in, uh, aspiring young women you could see. And we're trying to show them how to help them be the anything they want to be at the top of the power structures in every sector. And so, ten years. What, what are they doing, some of the older ones? The older ones, I, it, we have a very great alum network, and some of them, one of them's working at J.P. Morgan, one of them actually just graduated and is working at Barclays Bank. Uh, several of them are going to medical school. Um, some of them are working in the fashion industry. And so it, it's a very, very ho a hopeful and wonderful experience to watch. So they come away not only with leadership skills and politics and everything, but with the confidence and knowing uh, who they self -esteem, are, Self-esteem, right? confidence, and the, 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 in, in, the drive to really pursue the top of their careers, top of the professions. So now, are they f uh, big supporters of Hillary Clinton? Uh, no, it is actually a split scene <laughs> over there. Um, you know, we have a, certainly many who are and so happy and so thrilled that we may have, very well have our first female president. And then there are others who have been Bernie supporters, as you know, and a lot of the millennials have been, were, and are Bernie supporters. But uh, for the most part, we uh, encourage, we, we really try to stress that we need to break this barrier and make sure that Hillary gets elected. She's incredibly qualified and she will be, uh, we hope, the first female president in American history. It's funny, isn't it? The more we empower, or the more young women are empowered, the less impressed they are. It's the true. The fact that women have to, a woman president. It's that, so interesting. Well, you know, we taught them in the feminist movement, right. as you well know, being all of us and a part of it, that not all women, just because she's a woman, doesn't mean that, you know, we elect the woman in the position of whatever political position they're running for. So you need, we taught them that uh, you want to, you know, elect the most qualified candidate and the most appealing candidate who represents the interests of the people. Uh, Hillary is certainly incredible in terms of her experience and in terms of her, you know, what she will bring to bear and, and her ability to know how government works and both, you know, internationally and domestically. Um, and yet some young women say, well, just because she's a woman doesn't mean that I automatically support her because I don't agree with all her positions, let's say, in the past, in the war uh, yeah. decision on Iraq. However, you know, we have to weigh the balance. And right now we have Hillary versus Trump. Oh, and well, no problem. But it's interesting because older women still see her as a liberating thing. Yes, they do. And they do because we've waited a lot of years to get to the point where we are, where we can, in this country, where in all the world we have women that we can finally elect a woman as Amazing. I mean, you remember, of course, yeah. your mother's first campaign. Yes. This woman's place is in the House. I was thinking about it because that could be Hillary, this woman's place is in the White House. Well, but. you see, they use that term. <laughs> yeah. that my mother, that was her first, as you know, campaign right. slogan in 1970, right. this woman's place is in the House, the House of Representatives. <laughs> well, all the years later, now, where are we using it? House, yeah. the White House. And so what would she be saying about Hillary? She's I don't saying, even want, I don't think we know <laughs> <that>. <laughs> Well, you know, they knew each other and they yeah. worked together in Beijing yeah. in the, war, the Fourth World Women's Conference. I think she'd be all out there yeah. for her. I do, And too. being a very strong, ardent, uh, yeah. you know, supporter and speaker on her behalf. Right. I agree. Look at the world, though. It's so interesting and it's so taken. I mean, it isn't even getting noted. The Prime Minister of England, 
the Chancellor of, of Germany, a woman president of the United States. When, South well, America is filled with women presidents. Well, let me tell you what I think about that, Ronnie. I yeah. think, and I've told this to people when I make my own speeches on women power and politics, is there's been in the last five to ten years a dynamic, real dynamic sort of shift that's going on and many, many people don't want to acknowledge it, but that the female power is starting to emerge in all sectors and in a way in which the men, there are many men who will fight it, but many others, like in Rwanda, where there was genocide and when they have the highest number of female parliamentarians in their, in their mm -hmm. parliament, because the men there said, you know, we had such a mess here and we really screwed things up, maybe we should have women running our government. And so I feel that the, the planet Earth has been shifting and the power point has been shifting uh, slowly, but really now starting to happen. The stars are lining up for women to be leading the planet. And you look at the corporations too. That's right. More women. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Except there's something about it. <laughs> there's always well, except, right? Right. <laughs> Um, the women, you know, I went to Barnard many years ago. The president, the dean of Barnard was a woman. Right. And she had five kids, I think. Right. She had a very, very rich husband, so they had all the services for the kids. And her message was, you can do everything. Right. Well, basically, most women can't do everything. That's correct. That's correct. And it's very difficult. Yes, it um, is. So the women who do it and really rain, go to the top, they become so proud of themselves. Right, right. And it makes me crazy. Right. Because <laughs> it makes, it's, I don't know why. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes, of course. Lean in and all that yeah, kind well, of stuff. Yeah, lean in. As I say to my, my trainees, you can't just lean in. And I said this, you know, even, and I'm, I'm very glad Sheryl Sandberg is where she is and wrote this book. But you just can't lean in. You got to stand up and stand out. Yeah, yeah. It's so important. Yeah. And, you know, leaning in, you know, the idea is true, but it's not going to mean anything unless you seize the power and stand up and stand out and project who, you know, your human, your humanity and your power and your ability to connect with people you are leading. Now, that's an important trait, isn't it, generally, yes, it is. that people see in women leaders. That's right. And women and men, by the way. Yeah, but social scientists yeah. really say, I think most, uh, there's agreement that women do govern differently. Yes, that's correct. They're more collaborative. Correct. Uh, they're more common sense. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Their issues are slightly right. different, but in the long run, all the same because it all comes down that's to people. Right. So talk to it. Let me. Well, no, no. I think that that's very true, and I think that um, we are multitaskers. We, you know, the research has been done that uh, you know women are incredible multitaskers, obviously, um, and that because of handling childcare, still primary childcare, uh, with the primary responsibility of childcare, and handling multiple complexities of daily life, and as women still do, even if they're working, you know, the 80 hour week, that we know how to juggle it better. And I think men now, the one thing about it is with uh, the households where men and women are going out to work and men are becoming more um, the domestic caretaker, yeah. that's shifting so that both sides now, both men and women are understanding the needs. And if we had, uh, if we had government child care and parental leave nationally, you know, serious policy on that, I think we wouldn't even be discussing this. Right. I agree with you. But, you know, the other thing is people used to talk or still talk about women's issues. But when you look at them, I can't think of any issue. Exactly. It doesn't come back to what women say, right? Yeah, you mean what women say in terms of want. Yeah, what, what they mean, want. The yeah. core is is people and families that's and right. children. That's right. That's right. That's right. Even, and it's our humanity. It's our yeah. humanity. And you know, we need to bring in the human side of the condition of which we're all subjected to in this very complex world. And one of the things I always tell my trainees and my students is you know, in order to be a true leader, you have to be able to know yourself internally, but connect to them compassionately to the people's lives and to one on one and to the ecstasies and the agonies of regular working people and connect and show that you understand it and and take it into creating the policy in which you're working on as a leader or as a polit political elected official. Mm -hmm. And we need more of that even more now because, you know, the, the young women, people growing up, young women and men in the millennial generation and beyond are going to be facing the incredible issues and crises that we have before us and have to find the solutions. 
but they have to do it with a sense, in my view, of real compassion, real empathy, and real strength. And any leader, male or female, has to possess that. You are yourself a leader. Uh, you were in city council. You know, you you show that. It's a sense of being, you know, both strategic, but at the same time being understanding of the human condition, and also believing that what you feel is not unique to yourself. Uh, absolutely. You know, if absolutely. I don't, if you feel something, chances are that's a lot of people are that's feeling exactly, the same thing. That's exactly exactly right. And to show your vulnerability. I mean, yeah. one of the things about President Obama, and you know I was a supporter and advisor to him, you know, in the first campaign, is that I think, and I think the most effective leaders, and he certainly does, knows who he is, is stays principled, committed to the core of his to the core principles of his being in his personal life and his political life, as does his wife, the wonderful mm -hmm. Michelle Obama. And I think any leader who's effective and he, he's not afraid to show his his inner feelings, as he's strategically mm -hmm. so smart and so brilliant. And I think that any good leader has today, even more so today, because of the violence and the terrorism and the you know assault that's going on in this country and, and internationally, and because of guns in America, we have to be really a full you know show our full humanity and our commitment and our principles, stick to that, and yet know how to compromise and work collaboratively. Are you proud of him? Definitely, Obama. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I'm so proud that I was a supporter early yeah. on of him. Yeah. And I think that Michelle last night at the Democratic convention made an amazing speech, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. I think their whole time in, in the White House and elegant, smart, that's right. Dignified. That's right. I mean, just totally incredible. in every way. Yeah. And, you know, both in terms of their uh, official uh, positions and uh, he as president and with look what this man had to deal with, you know, coming into the, the, the thing that he came into with the economy and the a Congress that was completely in deadlock through the almost the entire time of his administration. And yet and committed and, to not helping him. Exactly. And committed to making him fail is yeah. right. Yeah. And that, you know, raising young children, he and Michelle, making them, you know, having to make them experience life and, and, and sh get the morals that they have and become incredible young women. And, you know, anybody, and now we have a point where we want to move it to carry on forward with Hillary. I hope that she will be the next president because I think um, we, it's high time. We're so, uh, after 20, you know, 200 years after, a, how many years after we won the right to vote in 1920, women, that we have to break this this barrier and stereotype. But what are we going to do now about color? Color. Yeah. What? <laughs> Before we get into that subject, yeah. I thought one of the, the most poignant parts of, of um, Michelle's speech was when she said, that first day of school, I saw my two little girls in a black van right. with all these men with guns. Right. I thought, what right. have we done? Right. 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 I mean, right. something. Let's go to color. OK. I mean, Bella, your mother, when she was pregnant, not with you, I guess it was right with before your sister. me, yeah. Yeah, yeah, before us. She was down in Mississippi, yes, uh, trying to, uh, well, defending Willie McGee, who was had been sentenced to death for raping a white woman, that uh, he was having a consensual affair, affair with, with. Mm -hmm. and she had to sit in the bus terminal at night because she was so scared. So, where are we? Much change, but still basically, yeah. I don't know. Unfortunately, um, you know, we, we moved through the civil rights movement. We passed, you know, uh, the Voting Rights Act. Uh, we passed the Civil Rights Act of 1964. We integrated schools in the 60s and 70s. We had affirmative action laws passed in the 80s and 90s that really leveled the playing field, attempted to do so in colleges and employment. And yet, um, we are here today. And we have tremendous segregation still in schools. We have the violence against, uh, <clears throat> you know, white against black, black on black, from basically on guns. But we have a tremendous conflict uh, that has re-arisen uh, in terms of racial, uh, racial politics in this country. And racial, and getting, you know, the sad part is, is that you, after all 50 years of working in all these ways, uh, trying to ban discrimination, all the work that's done by the people on the ground and civil rights organizations and the law, we're still, you know, falling backwards. What do your young women say? They're afraid. 
they're my young women of color, um, you know, have to live with this daily, and they're losing friends uh, at a very young age. I had a very dear one of my trainees yesterday who came to speak to, you know, graduated three years ago, and she's a young African American woman came to speak to our trainees now. She had to leave to go to a funeral of a 21 year old friend of hers who got caught up in a gunfire battle. I mean, she was an innocent, but just walking on the street. So the point is, um, you know, I really believe between, then schools have become segregated again. Yeah. Public schools have not broken that barrier. And uh, because of the guns and the violence against young men of color and the, the killings, uh, unjustifiable, you know, police brutality and the police of killings of largely young black men, right. uh, there's this resurgence of tremendous uh, racial conflict. What do and we do? what do we do? What do we do? Well, we have to ban guns. But what we do is we have to integrate our schools. We have to create more affordable housing for every, you know, uh, every, you know, racial category of people living in New York City. We have to start at the youngest age um, and really provide a lot more financing for schools, really good public schools and colleges. Do you believe that people who are supporting Trump um, really believe in everything he says and that they could never be convinced to change their mind? I believe that he has a lot of people. Trump's candidacy has pulled out of the woodwork people that have hatred, who are bigoted, who are misogynist, who were very angry that for the last many years we've had an African-American president. I believe that many of those really are fueling him to you know, spew out the bigotry in his platform and his campaign that he has. Do I believe that all of his supporters believe everything he says? Absolutely not. I just, I don't know what, the lack of courage among our legislators That's. who won't go beyond what they think are their supporters. I, I don't understand that. I'm so glad, you know, you, you said that because courage to me, That's you're right. Basic it's the basic courage and principles, integrity and being persevering. And in the long run, it helps you as, exactly. a, as a political person, exactly. right? Exactly. But does that happen every place? That's what I was trying no, to get at. You, if, mean, you mean if you're courageous ever in other parts of the country? Do they still respect your courage? or do they Well, I'm, it's a very good question. And I think we've... We, to, that courage is absolutely fundamentally one most important trait of a great leader. No, I don't think we've encouraged our leaders to take, and we have elected leaders who are willing to take risks on principle. I think one of the problems with that is because we don't, we money that it takes to run for political mm -hmm. office, I mean at the federal level, mm -hmm. not because we have public finance mm -hmm. at the city level, but not at the not state. Not for the Congress. Not, right. Yeah, not for the Congress. We've elected people who are owned by special interests. We've elected Congress, people in Congress are owned by special interests, so they fail to take more risks in their position. But there's another component to it also, is why are they, why are they running for office? Why are they elected officials? Do they have a core of principle and idea. I don't, I don't believe they don't so. Do. I don't believe they if do. If they're not, I mean. I don't believe they do. It's become, yeah. you know, it's, it's part of your business resume rather exactly. than. Exactly. It's yeah. like a profession. It's a yeah, career correct. ladder. Correct. You won for one correct. office, next office. Correct. Uh, when I grew up, I used to think something struck you and it was an important issue. You ran for office because of that. Yeah. And you and fought then, it to change, to make right. a positive social yeah. change. Part of that, I guess, is as you said, the need to build a base. I don't, I don't understand what happens. Why is John McCain not out there? 80 years old, he's had a very distinguished mm -hmm. career. And what does he have to lose? Exactly, right. so but, he might lose his election. Right. Is that the end of the world? Exactly. No. You take those positions, if you are a true leader, you are prescient or, and courageous and you're willing to take a risk for the principle that you believe in. And you, for the change you, you want to see. And you, my mother, and other you know, people. Right now, I tell people there may be three people, five people in the Congress, House and Senate, that may be close to doing that. Yeah. And I do believe that money, the, the fact that it costs so much to run for office in this country, and with no campaign finance limits for Congress or for running uh, that, that you have elected a select, you know, a group of people who you know, are beholden to their special interests who elected them, who helped finance their campaigns. 
It's and that is not representative of the people of the United States of America. Yeah. And all the different types of people in the United States. I, I don't know if the women are braver than the men. I'm not sure yet. Which what women? What do you think? I Which don't women? know. Let's talk about it. Only, it's a little less than 25% of the House. Is, 20%, yeah. yeah. And just about 25% in the Senate. Correct. And just a little bit less than 25% in state legislature. Correct, about right? 20%. Correct. So who stands out? Well, I, in, <laughs> in Elizabeth Warren, Kirsten Gillibrand. On the women's side, mm -hmm. Elizabeth Warren, Kristen Gillibrand, uh, Cory Booker, mm. uh, on you know, in terms mm. of men, um, who else? Uh, some of the uh, Tammy Duckworth, uh, you know, some of the people. Fr you know, I'm sure there are more. I mean, yeah, I was, I'm just trying to think. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, is it that they're not dependent on this for a job and they're? I income? believe that, and also they, they didn't come to it for that. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't come to it with that in mind, you know, and certainly when you hear Elizabeth Warren talking about the banks and you, you hear her talking about the corrupt, you know, the guys running the show, I mean, she comes from it as she says, I was a teacher, an academic, you know, she was a public school teacher. And I was poor and I poor, was a my young father, mother. <laughs> right, young mother, my father was a maintenance yeah. guy, et cetera. And uh, these are the kinds of people that whose lives you know, live lives of a normal and common American, mm -hmm. whatever your race, ethnic background. Mm -hmm. And so she understands, and she's, she's trying to reflect her policies, her, her work is trying to incorporate the needs of people in America who are just like her, working people. And there's a reason that she's in public office. Right. I mean, she was very happy being at Harvard Law School. That's correct, that's correct. But yeah. she ran for a reason. That she ran for a reason because she cared to make a change in terms of way the inequities of this country and the banking system controlling it and wanting to have regular Jane and Joe, you know, be able to live a better life, you know? And the truth is she is, as an example, one person who says what she thinks, thinks what she says, and is really bright, really compassionate, and passionate about what she's working on. You know what? She on. says it in such a simple way. That's right. That's right. That, you know who she reminds you of, even though she's not the Jewish version? Yeah. Bella. Yeah. In terms of, you know, some of, you know, yeah. in terms of the passion committed to right. it and the concepts of making right. it clear what the issues are. It's, do you think that the environment that people grow up in, what's that? affects their, yeah. you know, running for yeah. office and yeah. their, yeah, I do. Yeah. I do. In our family and in your household and our household, it's always fighting for a sense of justice. We, in my grandparents, my parents, and we all were committed to creating a more fair world for all and fighting against injustice. And as a little girl, I was exposed. I know I was lucky mm -hmm. to have parents like I did who believed mm -hmm. very strongly in that and who then worked to implement it as my mother did as a civil rights lawyer, a labor lawyer, and then a congresswoman, and then the first woman to run for mayor and senate. And a peace in this activist. State. And a peace activist was her agenda, as exactly. you know well, having been her colleague, yeah. to get her elected to the Congress. Ran on a peace, mm -hmm. as you quite right said, mm -hmm. as a peace activist and an organizer. Ran on that agenda to get elected to the Congress. In her first month, calling, after she is elected, who ever heard of a congresswoman or congressman calling for the impeachment of a president in her first month after she was elected to office. And that was Nixon over the war in Vietnam. Yeah, it was, she was quite incredible. Right. Yeah. And so we need to break the barriers. We need not to have fear. Our leaders must be fearless with conviction and commitment and humanity. And as a voter, you have to, uh, first of all, you have to vote, number one. Right. Even though we don't like to say That's it. That's right. You do have to no, vote. No, you, you have to say it. Uh, um, but... You have to understand what your candidate is talking about. Exactly. Be not only educated about it, but, but really do take some time to pause and hear and yeah. get to know what they're, they're that saying. That was always my strong point in helping other candidates. Because if I would say, if I don't understand you, who's going to understand you? What are you saying? Absolutely. And we get caught up in this rhetoric that Ab we hear. Right. And, and that's another thing with new, you know, political people today with electeds. A lot of times... They're talking rhetoric, and they're not explaining the politics. cliche the, after the cliche. Right. It's and ridiculous. Then, it is. It's a soundbite. Yeah. And that's also, you know, driven by media, 24-7, cable, and et cetera. But we must ask more of our leaders, is what you're saying. And our leaders have to know that they have to make it clear to their constituents. They have to have the basic, basic principles and then the courage to see the fight through, right? Exactly. 
Yeah. And to make it, explain it and to galvanize their constituents That's to right. help change it. They shouldn't have constituencies right. that are against them. Exactly. They have to go out and organize that's it. Right. That's right. That's, that's what, what Bella we, was. That's right. That's what you did. That's what any good elected. Grassroots. Elected. That's right. Grassroots <laughs> and the business sector and the different yeah. levels, but getting, you know, getting the, the movement from the people. from organize organizing behind the up. issue. It isn't and just that you talk out to people exactly. and you go to Congress exactly. and you vote. Exactly. It's that you have to convince them before. That's right. That's right. And that's one that's of the reasons really why Bernie Sanders, you know, has a movement. A movement. <laughs> yeah. What's going to happen to his movement? Are they going to... I hope that that will continue in that, um, you know, as a movement of change in this country and that uh, we see that Hillary Clinton in the primary season adapted a lot of the, the mm -hmm. you know, the positions that... They, they were very responsible for moving the Democratic to the Party left. to the left. Exactly. But as we okay. know, and as you well know, once elected, you know, sometimes we well, shift right back into the there. middle. They have yeah. to be there. But more important also is they have to be organizing in states. Because That's correct. The state legislature. That's right. right. That's right. Very much so. Yeah. Because all the anti-abortion things and all the, the you voting. Know, fights, vote, voting rights and the fight against LGBT rights right. are happening. Campaign at, finance. Right. State. Happening all at the state level. Yeah. You need to address it. So you really have a big task getting these young women energized and I wanting do. to do this. I do. I do. But, you know, it is such a gratifying thing to watch. Yeah, it gives me a lot of hope, you know, that you're seeing these young women really assert themselves and, you know, break down their self-esteem issues and re really use their intelligence and understand that they have to seize the power and then take it and do it responsibly is a very um, life uh, enlightening and, and very uh, hopeful thing to see and to watch. And it gives me a lot of um, pleasure to know that at least maybe we're making a difference with the young women coming up and that they will break the final barriers. And when I tell them, you are still not a rec equal recognized citizen on the United States Constitution because there is no Equal Rights Amendment in the federal Constitution, you know that? that the surprise that comes on the faces of so many and then once they understand that this is in fact true and has all the ramifications, you know, legally in terms of other rights for them, they become indignant and they say, wait a minute, we're going to, why, we have to change this. And I'm there as one of their trainers and as one of their role modelers to make them understand it's okay to be out there and assertive and aggressive and take the, you know, take the reins of leadership because we expect you to grab the mantle. And I want you, I say to them, to do it responsibly and to do it uh, beautifully in your own voice. Whatever voice, whether it's in the corporate, the public, the private, the academic sector and media, you must express and do it in your own voice, but do it in a way that we're going to finally achieve full gender equality. Well, Liz Habsegger, we've come to the end of this program. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine. Are you taking this program on the road? Yeah, yeah. We've been asked to set, well, money. It's always money, everybody. We've been asked to take this to Philadelphia, to Atlanta, to California, to Austin, Texas, uh, to set it up in many mm -hmm. parts of the country. And I really do hope one day we will be able to do that. And the website? Website is www.abzuginstitute.org. Bali girls forever, as they say, the feminines is what they call themselves, and we call them. Oh, great. Join us. Join Thanks. us in our fight for true gender equality. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. If there are any people you'd like to hear or topics you'd like us to explore, please let me know. You can write to me at CUNY TV, 365 Fifth Avenue, New York, New York, 10016. Or you can go to the website at cuny.tv and click on Contact Us. I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.